it's Alex and welcome to Hey Little Thrifter. Today I'm doing my September reading wrap up which is mostly about the books I read for the Ladies of Horror Fiction readathon. This was a readathon that took place during the month of September and I co-hosted it with the Ladies of Horror Fiction. If you're not already following them I will leave all of their links below. They have a fantastic website, they're also really active on Instagram and Twitter so definitely go check them out if you are not following them already. And this readathon was to celebrate their one year anniversary which is a really awesome milestone so congrats to them. They are a fantastic initiative promoting female horror authors who typically get overlooked within the genre. For the readathon we had five challenges. The first one was to read a horror book by an indie author and I read a short story collection. This was Cruel Works of Nature by Gemma Amore and this was an enjoyable collection. Some stories I liked more than others but overall it was a good read. Typically the stories followed a normal everyday character dealing with their normal everyday life until something strange started to happen. I really liked this setup because it made you instantly relate in some way to the character and then put yourself in their position for when <laughs> things start to get weird. I rated each story individually and then the average ended up being three and a half stars out of five for the whole collection. And my favourites in the collection were Jack in the Box, which you can probably guess is about a creepy Jack in the Box and yeah, some other stuff related to that. Black Sand was a really interesting one. I really liked the atmosphere and the main character and her story. Yeah, that, that was maybe my favourite of the whole collection. Then Scufflebug was also really good, that was about spiders, of which I'm terrified, so yeah, that was a really creepy one. His life's work about a private doctor calling in to visit a patient at their home, but it seems the patient has other plans for the doctor. And It Sees You When You're Sleeping, which was a really great festive story and it had yeah lots of good kind of tension and suspense and it was quite action-packed too so yeah this was an enjoyable collection and like I say I rated it three and a half stars out of five overall and the other interesting thing about this one is that there's an illustration by the author at the beginning of each story which I thought was a really nice addition Challenge number two was to read a horror book by an LGBTQ plus author and for this I read The Lamb Will Slaughter the Lion by Margaret Kiljoy. This is a novella and I really liked this one. I was immediately drawn into the characters in the story. We're following a character called Danielle who has lived most of her life kind of on the road with like no fixed abode and she is heading to a place called Freedom where a friend of hers used to live and who recently killed himself so she is trying to find out exactly what happened. Now Freedom is an abandoned town that has been taken over by squatters and they live together in like an equal society Everything's on like a kind of trust and honesty basis. So there's food available, which is, you know, free to take. But in exchange for that, you have to contribute something, whether that's, you know, working or helping in various ways. So it's an equal society in that way. And that's how they like it. But recently, one of their members was trying to become their leader, which isn't really something a lot of them wanted and the only solution was for a few of them to summon a spirit which came in the form of a three-antlered deer to uh, dispatch with this person. And to start with this plan worked out as they wanted it to but the longer the spirit stayed in town with this community it also started to kill some other people. 
and Danielle turns up in town just as all of this is happening and she decides to stay and figure out this situation along with looking for answers about her friend's death. This story was just really absorbing, I really enjoyed her writing and the characters and the story so yeah it had a lot of elements I really liked and this cast of characters was really diverse which was really awesome. I like to read a lot of vintage horror which I do enjoy but it is typically lacking in the diversity department so The Lamb Will Slaughter the Lion was truly a breath of fresh air for me. I rated this one 4 out of 5 stars, it was excellent, I definitely want to check out the next book in the series too. Challenge number 3 was to read a book by an author of colour and for this I read Beloved by Toni Morrison. This book had been on my must read in 2019 list and I haven't gotten to it yet but I'm so glad I finally picked it up. Beloved is about a woman escaping from slavery and she's trying to start a new life with her family. One of her children died when they were very young and she's haunted by the ghost of this child. So it's a really interesting combination of the very real and the supernatural. The story's told in quite an interesting way, it kind of flits around different time periods and different characters and I just absolutely love this one. I don't really know what else to say about it other than if you haven't read it, I highly recommend you pick it up. It was heartbreaking and yeah, there were times when the content made me cry because of what was happening to these characters and knowing that things like that really happened to people was yeah just really horrifying and, and devastating. There were other times that I was brought to tears by her writing. You know I'd be on my way to work on the bus reading away and there'd be a sentence or a passage and I'd just have to like take a moment and sit and really take it in and think wow that was amazing. Yeah how I mentioned I really loved her writing, um, yeah this was just such an amazing read. It's definitely one that's going to stay with me for a while and I rated it 5 out of 5 stars which as you know is something of a rarity for me. I don't rate too many books 5 stars, a book has to be really special to get that rating from me so yeah this one is definitely worthy and I think I mentioned when I was going through my TBR for the readathon that I'd heard that this has been classed as literary fiction and some people also class it as horror and I think after reading it I would class it as literary fiction first and foremost but it does have horror elements, it could be classed as horror and I see why some people do. I would probably stick it in the horror adjacent category but yeah this was a wow book and it was a 5 out of 5 star read for me. Challenge number 4 was to read a book by a middle grade or young adult author and I decided to read one of each for this challenge. So for middle grade I read Spirit Hunters by Ellen O. This is about a young girl called Harper. She and her family are moving house and they move into an old house which she finds really creepy and it turns out that Harper can see ghosts and this house is haunted. This was a good read, I quite enjoyed it and I definitely enjoyed the cultural elements. It touches on a lot of Korean culture which was really interesting and it's great to see that kind of representation in a kids book. I enjoyed the supernatural elements of the story too although I did think there were maybe kind of too many elements going on that it did feel a bit convoluted at times. I feel like the story would have been a bit smoother had it just 
maybe stuck to a couple rather than several of these ideas. But it was cute and fun and I enjoyed it. I rated this one three and a half stars out of five. And for young adults, I picked The Surfer by Linda Cargill. Of course, any excuse to read another point horror book. And this one was not quite what I expected. I did enjoy it, but from the premise, I was expecting more of your typical point horror fair. Um, there's a teenage girl who witnesses someone seemingly drown and disappear but then this girl turns up alive and I thought it was going to be some more supernatural, you know, a ghost or, you know, somehow coming back from the dead type situation. But yeah, it definitely went in another direction. This was your more bonkers end of the point horror world. This ended up involving a witch from an old folk tale and it was kind of brilliant. I think some of the storytelling felt quite choppy, so the, the overall novel did feel a bit uneven at times, but the ideas there were interesting and I was definitely here for the what's just happened moments. Yeah, this was definitely a fun read and I rated it three out of five stars. And challenge five was to read a translated book or a book set in another country. I read I Remember You by Ursa Segura Dottir. She is an Icelandic author and the story is also set in Iceland. And this was a supernatural story. And this story is actually two stories. So each chapter kind of alternates back and forth with the two stories until they come together towards the end. And I really liked that format, I thought it worked really well. One story is following a group of friends who have purchased a house in a really remote village. They're planning to renovate it and hopefully rent it out as a B&B during the summer. So they get dropped off by a man in a boat who says he'll meet them back here in a week's time. The only phone reception you can get is if you walk up a hill and it's more of a mountain and there's no electricity. So yeah, they've brought everything they need to survive the week and renovate the house. But as you can imagine, things don't quite go as planned and there are some strange goings on in the house. The second story is following a psychiatrist who is helping the police with a particular case and this gives the story a bit of a police procedural type format so if you like those kind of stories then you might want to check this one out so it's not directly following a detective or anything but you kind of have that similar feel because he does have some involvement with the police and there are some crimes involved in the story which he is kind of somewhat investigating himself. So the supernatural element of the story, I thought it was okay. Maybe it's just that I read a lot of horror that it definitely felt quite light to me. But if you don't read a lot of horror, then you might find it a lot creepier than I did. It just felt pretty formulaic to me. But I did enjoy the story and I thought the way the two storylines came together was really clever. There were definitely a couple of surprises in there and I, yeah, quite enjoyed how it all came together towards the end. This was another enjoyable read and I rated it three and a half stars out of five. So those were all of the books I read for the Ladies of Horror Fiction readathon. I also wanted to throw in a couple of vintage horror novels by women and I actually was really pleased with myself for managing to squeeze them into the month of September as well. First up was Skin by Kathy Koja and I have a separate review video for this so I'll leave that linked in the description below if you want to go check it out but I absolutely loved this one. This was another five star read for me this month so yeah I just realised that was two five star reads this month which is pretty amazing and this is about a metal sculptor 
who meets a dancer and they combine their artistic forces and create this performance art group and this involves the metal work and it also involves body modification so there's a lot of references to scarification and piercings. Her writing is absolutely astounding. She's definitely one of my favourite authors. I just love her style and the things she writes about. So yeah, this was an amazing read. Five out of five stars. And then I read Home Sweet Home by Ruby Jean Jensen. This features one of my favourite covers of all time. This is the second of her books that I've read. I really enjoyed Wait and See. I rated that one four stars. This one was good, but I didn't enjoy it quite as much as the other one. So this was three and a half out of five. This is about a young boy called Timmy. He's 10 years old and his parents sent him off for a couple of weeks with a friend of theirs, Dan, who is kind of known as Uncle Dan, even though, you know, he's not a real uncle, but they've all been friends for a few years and Dan offers to take Timmy up to his cabin in the middle of nowhere for a couple of weeks during the summer. So Timmy doesn't want to go with Uncle Dan, he doesn't really like him, but he's forced to go by his parents. So Dan drives him up many hours away to his cabin in the woods and when he gets there there are some other kids there as well and Timmy's actually quite pleased that he'll be getting to spend a couple of weeks with these other kids rather than just with creepy Uncle Dan. But yeah, Uncle Dan is pretty creepy. There's definitely some paedophile insinuations going on in this book. I wouldn't say there's anything like graphic um, and definitely not in a sexual nature, but there's a lot of stuff that's implied and he is also physically abusive to these children. So yeah, that was a lot darker than I had imagined this story was going to be when I went into it. I thought it was maybe going to be something more supernatural, but yeah, this is definitely more of a real people are the monsters type story. There is another element though, because Dan refers to someone called Little Mother, who isn't revealed until later in the story, but that was quite an interesting element. I will say the reveal and the end of the book I felt was a little lacking. I, it was good, but I just wanted a little bit more from it. Overall, I did still enjoy this one. It's well written, her writing is really easy to get into, and it was a good story, so it definitely kept me hooked throughout and wanting to know exactly what was going on and were these kids going to survive. And I also managed to listen to one audiobook this month which wasn't horror related, it's a true crime one, but I yeah, wanted to read something by a female author at least just to kind of have a whole theme for the month and I went with Lady Killers by Tori Telfer and the audiobook is narrated by Sarah Mollo Christensen. This is all about various female serial killers over the centuries and it was a bit of a mixed bag, I felt. The beginning, the introduction, kind of overview was really interesting. Um, she talks about how female killers are depicted so differently to male killers in the media especially. And then she goes on to talk in detail about a number of different female serial killers. One of the problems I had was that some of the stories kind of merged into one for me because the circumstances, the methods of killing, like poison, and the reasons for killing were, a lot of them were very similar, so I had a bit of a hard time differentiating between the different cases and it felt like it got quite repetitive but maybe that's more my fault than the author's. It would have been interesting had she included some more recent cases as well to kind of compare 
over the decades. I feel like it would have added more to the overall discussion. Overall, it was still a good book. I rated it three and a half stars out of five. And yeah, some of the stories in here were shocking and um, interesting to hear about. So yeah, if you like true crime, you might want to check this one out. And that was everything I read in September. Let me know if you've read any of these, I'd love to hear what you thought. Thank you to anyone that took part in the Ladies of Horror Fiction readathon. If you did, I'd love to hear what books you read and if you had any favourites. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!